All right, so uh, last talk before the lunch break, at least in this room, uh, by Thorsten Grote, and he will talk about uh, Collab Groupware. And there's nothing left to do but set the kitchen timer and have you do your thing. Thank you very much, and thanks everybody for coming. I'm Thorsten Grote, working uh, with the Collab community, and I'm here to show you what Collab is all about. So, like we all know why we love free software, right? Like we can freely use, study, share, and improve the software that we run. And there's nobody who could tell us like what the software can do and what it can't. Like we are in control, and uh, we are the ones to decide. Nobody can make decisions except us if we choose to do so. So um, why why is it that free software isn't everywhere? Like if it's so good, if it can do everything, like what's stopping it from taking over the world? And especially like where most computers are in, in companies and public administrations, there is very, very little free software. And like I ask myself the question, like, what's the problem? Because we have achieved so much since the free software movement started. Like we have GNU, we have Linux, so we have a complete operating system that we can use on servers and on desktops, even on tablets, and it runs free software. So, so what's stopping people from, from going fully for software? So one, one big point was office programs, because many people need that, and especially in companies, they all have Microsoft Office. And there was no really good alternative so far, but now we have even two. We have LibreOffice and we have OpenOffice. And that's also something we achieved. So that problem is solved. Like we could still, of course, improve upon it, but the big, big stone is out of the way. So, the problem here is people can now use free operating system, free office suite, but missing is, of course, what, what people usually use for their email, for their communication, for their calendars, their address books, and this is a groupware solution. Usually Outlook, but here we have Colab as a replacement. So we are hoping that by placing Colab into the market and giving it to everybody as free software, we are removing one more problem out of the way for free software world domination, basically, and giving you the control that you deserve. So I give you a short overview of, of what we have and what we can do. So that is the web client, and it shows the email view. So of course we can do email, and we can do email nicely, because we're working very close with the RoundCube initiative, and we have uh, Thomas from RoundCube sitting right here. And he's done some great work integrating Colab properly in Roundcube because Roundcube could do mail before. And um, what it now also can do to work as a proper groupware is calendars. So you can have multiple calendars. You can, you can show them. You can disable them. You can share them with other people. You can, you can be putting events into other people's calendars. You can invite people for events. You can even see when people are free and when they are busy. You don't need Doodle or something like that anymore if you have Colab. And of course, you can also import calendars from the web and show them in this view as well. And this is address books. Also, many different address books, global address books, sharing address books with people. Like if, if somebody else already put an address in there, you don't need to do it anymore and pictures showing in the mail view as well, everything that you want. This is a task, this is pretty new, that was what we did lately. Um, you can do, you can finally get things done with Colab. <laughs> yeah, because you can manage your tasks, you can sort them hierarchically, you can set dates and you can order them by priorities. Um, you have a really quick overview. You can tag them and say, okay, I would just want the tasks that are tagged with, with the Colab task, for example, or with, uh, I don't know, your homework or your shopping list, whatever. So we also work with own cloud, and up there you see also a files button. Um, that's also possible to put own cloud into Colab. And apart from the web client that you just saw, we have native clients that you can run on your own computer, um, which are fully offline capable. So if you're in a train or in a plane and you still want to work with your stuff, it's of course possible because the native clients get the data, uh, show them to you, and you can work with them, change that, and it gets synced next time you connect online. 
And uh, the main client we use is KDE Contact. That's the upper one there. Um, that is like the, has the most features, is most complete, and we see most likely to be a, a good free software competitor to Outlook. But for many other people, uh, there's also Thunderbird and Lightning that uh, works with Colab as well. And uh, all, like the two programs, they work on Windows, on Mac, and on Linux. So it doesn't matter like if you have a diverse architecture like in your company or at home even, like uh, your wife with a Mac can work with the same data and still interact with you even though you have a Linux machine and your brother who has a Windows computer, for example. So this is Android. It also means we can get your call-up data on Android, not only on Android, but on all mobile devices that support ActiveSync, which is basically all of them, like even the iPhone. So you can have your web client see your data, you can have it locally on your contact client, on your laptop, and even on your mobile phone, and then it reminds you of the events that you put in on your laptop. And that's truly awesome, and that's what we want. Like At the booth, somebody came to us and said, yeah, that's basically then a Google killer, right? And yes, that is exactly what we are aiming at, that you can choose where to store your private sensitive data, and that you can, even if you want, install it yourself on your own server that sits at home or in the data center of people you trust, and that you don't have to hand it over to Google where you don't know what they do with your data. Um, since we are a free software project, we try to pray very nice with the community and be a good member and work with as many proven free software components as we can to not reinvent the wheel. So, so this is uh, maybe even an incomplete list of the free software products that we integrate in our solution. Um, this, the default configuration is a Cyrus and Postfix and the 389 directory server and Apache. But you can also use this with uh, Nginx and Davcut as possible, Open LDAP as possible as well. So uh, this is not to scare you, but just to show you, like give you a rough idea of, of what Colab is and how it basically works. So um, our main power horse uh, that we use for, for almost everything is um, the IMAP server, because all our data is stored in IMAP. So if you want to move your data from one server to another, all you have to do is do an IMAP sync, and all data is there. So even the calendars, the tasks, and um, the address books, they are stored in IMAP. And uh, that also enables uh, scalability quite a lot, because you can have, for example, a Cyrus murder infrastructure serving hundreds of thousands of users, and it still runs like snappily fast. And this, the same is possible with all the other components that we use. You can, you can scale them up and down as much as you want and serve really like thousands of users or just two users that like you and your wife, for example. So, so everything is there in, Cy in, in Cyrus IMAP. The user's database is stored in an LDAP server. Um, for for ma mail MTA, we usually use Postfix that works quite quite well. Of course, uh, spam checking, uh, virus checking, like we use the standard components that, that all the GNU Linux operating systems use as well. Um, the active sync is served by an Apache web server, the same with uh, the Roundcube web client also running on Apache, um, using a MySQL database for caching, um, and memcache can be used as well. Um, what I didn't mention so far is the Colab daemon. Like this is a piece of, uh, today it's Python, Python software, that makes sure that all the components are working well with each other. So if you create a new mailbox or a new user, that mailboxes are created in Cyrus, the LDAP server knows about it, that Roundcube can let the person log in right away. Um, we also have command line utilities where you can administrate everything around Colab, like create new shared folders for everybody. Um, but we also have a web client that allows you to just click at user, click at groups, at new rules, at resources, everything. So Colab is 100% free software and we develop it publicly. We have public development mailing lists and we have public source code repositories. So if you go to git.colab.org, um, you see everything and you can subscribe the commits, can see each change we make, uh, and you can, of course, easily contribute as well. Like, send us patches, we have also public bug tracker, 
we try to be as open and as friendly, as nice as possible. Um, like I'm helping myself on the mailing list a lot, so if there's somebody coming and saying, yeah, I want to help here and there, or have the idea for this and that plugin, um, like we help people and support them to actually get stuff done and to, to realize the visions they have. That is a developer meeting. I just want to, to show you some, some nice pictures of uh, like how it looks like when we get together to code. Um, yeah, that was in Berlin, friendly hosted by, by KDAB, and um, we had a great time there hacking. Um, this, this is Thomas from OneCube discussing with our uh, lead developer. And this is all of us uh, having a beer afterwards. So you see, like friendly community, nice people to hang out with, and we would love uh, to work with you as well. Um, like, if you want to know more about Colab, go to colab.org, or here in the K building, uh, right next to Own Cloud, we have a little booth. If you want to know more, you we, sh we show you Colab, the web admin, everything around there. So if you have any questions, come chat us up, and we will be delighted to help you. Um, this is something that was started just recently, which is mycolab.com. So we realized that many people don't want to install Colab themselves because they don't have a server or they don't want to maintain it or they just don't know how to do it. So um, there is now a company offering hosting Colab. So you just sign up there. Currently it's a free beta. At, at some point they will probably have some money for, for it and just Two clicks and you have a Colab account yourself. You can hook up your clients. You can use their client right away. Hook up your mobile phone. Uh, works out of the box. No, no problems. And the second one, your project at mycolab.org is um, an offer especially for FOSTEM initiatives. Like the real power of a group where it only shows when you have multiple users in, in, in one Colab server because then they can share with each other and collaborate. Like it's, that's what Groupware is about. So if you are in a free software project and you like to test Colab internally, like we can, we can give you uh, something, fedora.mycolab.org, and you can try it out right away. So that's from, that's from me. Thank you for your attention, and I think we have some time for questions. Well, you usually, yeah, the, the question is, like, what are the, the hardware requirements, basically, in terms of CPU and, and RAM to run a Colab server? Well, I th like, with one gigabyte, it, it's, it might work, but you, you, you probably want to have two gigabytes. A CPU is not that important, but it also depends on the number of users you want to serve. Like, for just a small server, the few people, like, one to two gigabyte of RAM and a small processor is, is totally fine. Another question? Uh, so what piece is missing? What do you feel is missing most to make it a true collaborative environment? Well, the question is what is missing to make it a true collaborative environment? And um, I think it's basically complete, but you could, of course, always improve upon it. And what I like to see is um, web interface integration for Jabber, for example. Like it's also easy to, to hook up a Java server to the same LDAP and just serve at the same address also XMPP uh, chat. But it would be nice to, to go into your web interface and see what, your, what of your friends are online, the same with Google Talk, and then to, to chat them up right away without need for native clients. That would be nice. And what I also like to see is an integrated Etherpad where you could do real-time collaborative text editing that you then could maybe attach to emails or, or make a task of if that needs, still needs to be changed in the document. That would be cool as well. We would use it as well, though. <laughs> Well, the, the contacts, are, okay, repeating the question. Um, what are the protocols we use for, for contacts and calendars? Um, to serve to the outside, we use ActiveSync, because that's what all devices support. 
um, the native clients are actually hooking in directly into the IMAP because in there um, the contacts are stored in XCard and the calendars in XCal format. Um, and that's also open standards, everybody uh, can understand that. But um, you asked for what's missing. Um, we are also still working on CardDAV and CalDAV integration for people who really need that. And there's, I think, the, the Mac uh, clients on, on the Mac laptops, they still need, need, need those protocols. Um, how difficult it is to exchange postfix with another SMTP server? Hmm, good question. Like, that's not my area of expertise, but uh, it's definitely possible. But the problem is we are using some of the postfix features to make um, Kula possible. For example, that you cannot send emails um, to other people. So I don't know how difficult it is. I know it's possible, but um, if you want to work on it, uh, you're, you're welcome.